Good afternoon, this is Schweitzer, and let's do a quick little talk about ionic bonding. Um, Alright, so, let's move along here, see some standards there. Alright, so first, kind of guts of ionic bonding is, first of all, you have to be able to recognize, is a substance an ionic bond, or substance for that matter. Um, if you can't figure that out, well then, you're kind of... Uh, you're pretty much stuck here. So, for example, here, how do we know this is an ionic bond? Well, first of all, um, we have ourselves a metal and a nonmetal. All right, what about this one? Again, yeah, it's a metal, nonmetal, but you got to be able to adjust a little bit. You should note that the metal is actually a cation and the non-metal is an anion. So here I recognize this is, I got a metal here, uh, so a positive, and, non, and an anion here, which is negative one. Now, how do I know this? Well, this is a, what's called a polyatomic ion. All right, so for example, again, polyatomic really just means that it is a multiple atom ion. So um, this thing actually, we we're, we're not, haven't talked about it yet, but you've got some knowledge of chemistry. Uh, it's actually a molecule. It looks like this. And it is, we got a bond, a bond here, let's say. And it's a little molecule. The overall molecule has a charge of negative. So these things are unique. Um, but they're all over the place um, and there's a whole bunch of them and we pretty much need to know a bunch of these uh, uh, as we get going. And this is this one here happens to be nitrate. So you, you get pretty much got to be under a rock someplace never heard of, heard of some of these things like nitrates, phosphates, uh, carbonates. So there's a lot of these you'll see here and as we get through our year you'll just recognize these as a polyatomic ion. So that again is an anion Okay, and a cation. All right, we do have a term for this, which is a single individual ion, and we just call it a monatomic ion. Monatomic, one atom ion. All right, so first of all, you you, you got to be able to recognize an acid. And then you gotta be able to give it a name so you can communicate with other people about these things. Um, the name for science of naming things, if you haven't figured that yet, is nomenclature, the process of giving names. Just like people have first names, and middle names, last names, we have means. And, and each substance only has, a, has to have a unique name. So our rules for writing uh, formulas and writing the names. Um, well, first of all, an ionic compound is a cation and an anion. Okay, that's what it looks like here. Um, okay, so these rules here would be that simply, we just, for the rules of the giving you a name, is just name of cation. We put the cation first, and you simply put the name of the anion. And we, that's it. Now, one thing that's unique about this one is this. We never give quantities. Okay, so rules for writing formulas. Okay, so formulas, first of all, again, the cation goes first. Cation first. Okay. So an example will be like NaCl, NaCl, that's our formula. This is my cation, this is my anion. Um, and then we are what's called charge balanced. Okay, and that means my, that my total positive charge has to equal my total negative charge. Okay, so let's try a couple of these out. All right, so give myself a little smaller pen here so you can see a few things. 
All right, so aluminum chloride. Now you need to be able to go on and, and uh, either on a chart or understand the periodic table to realize what my common charges are of these things. Some of them have more than one, but um, we'll deal with that too. But aluminum only has one form of a charge. That's Al with a positive three charge. And chloride is only has one charge, and that's a minus one charge. Okay, so in this end here, I have plus three minus three. So we charge balance this. It says how many of my chlorides do I need to balance this out? I need three, three of them. Um, three Cl negatives to balance out the one positive three. And this is gonna give us AlCl3. Okay, um, that's it. So we have this little thing called a crisscrossing rule that we'll use as well. So the positive three and the minus one, if you want to charge balance them, the three goes there and the one goes here. All right, so then ammonium, that's a polyatomic. It goes N, H, four, sulfate, another one, S, O, four, minus two, this is plus one. So I need two of the ammoniums to balance out the one sulfate. So I need two of these. So the way we, we handle that is we put it in parentheses. We put the quantity right here. Two ammoniums is a positive two charge equals the SO4, which is a minus two charge. Copper two phosphate, okay. So this is one where I got this Roman numeral here. That is just, remember this, this guy never gives quantities. Okay, that's over here. Never gives quantities, the names. Name of cation. So that's just, this is just the name of that cation. We do this if there's more than one version. So there's a copper plus one and there's a copper plus two in nature. So this is the two version. Copper phosphate, PO4 minus three. This one's plus two. Charge balance. Parentheses around that family. We only really use the parentheses if there's more than one atom involved. So, I want the whole thing. And the three goes there. There we go. Copper, copper two phosphate. Again, that's not giving quantities, it's the charge. This guy here, again, to do this, just the names of each. Uh, I have ammonium and nitrate, that's it. Ammonium. Nitrate. Here, aluminum hydroxide. And there's three of them there. And you're may be tempted to tell us that there's three there, but we just say aluminum hydroxide. Okay. And there we go. This guy. Now there is more than one form of iron. There is Fe with a positive two charge. And there's Fe with a positive three charge. Okay, so which one are we doing here? I gotta indicate that. I can't just say iron oxide. Okay, now the reason why I can't do that is because, well, there's more than one version. Um, you could be a room, I could do this guy, or I could do this one, Fe. All right, this one here is, I know is minus, is a plus two charge. The reason why I know it's plus two is that the oxygen is, is a standard minus two charge and they're balancing one to one. So this is actually iron two oxide. Okay, iron three oxide would look like this. Positive three minus two, the two goes here and the three goes there. That's iron three oxide, okay. And then we have a little bit of practice on your own. Pause this. If you're working on this, uh, you can pause it and try them on your own. I'll just jot the answers in here. This type of work requires practice and is not something that you're going to master overnight.
All right. It says here, why are ion compounds charge balanced? Well, it goes back to how they're actually made. And sometimes I always, I'll make an analogy for kids that if you were to take a earth and say this is earth here, and all of a sudden you see a big pile of dirt on, on earth, okay, here, you would be standing right here. What likely, if there's a big pile of dirt someplace, there's likely a hole someplace where they took the dirt out and they put it up. So what that means is that in on earth, whenever there is a positive, there tends to be an associated negative. There aren't more positives than negatives. So in this case, um, why that their charge balance is because whenever you created a negative, a positive was also revealed. So what happens here when this is made is uh, we have aluminum metal, okay? This is some background information. The aluminum will, will go to aluminum plus three, which gives rid of three electrons. So we call this oxidation. It's an old fashioned term, but we'll use it a lot. And then, yeah, this, you know, aluminum can only get rid of three electrons if something's willing to take it. It's kind of like money. In the middle of the desert, you're stuck. A million dollars will be no use to you if you want anybody can buy it or take it. Money is only good if people are willing to take it. So these, like, this guy gives rid of three electrons and it gives them to the chlorides. And therefore, negative one, negative one, one. So if you have one aluminum, you're going to, you could then make three chlorines negative. All right. So I have one aluminum, which is a positive three. I'm going to have three chlorides, which are negative three, negative one each. So I have three of them. Hence, we get AlCl3. All right, just like here. Magnesium is a plus two. Oxygen is a minus two. And you should be able to figure those out from the periodic table. There's one of each of them for a positive two charge and a minus two charge. My M charge balanced. Okay, these guys equal each other. So it has to do with how the electrons are transferred from one atom, the metal, to the non-metal. This, of course, is a cation, and all the metals are essentially trying to oxidize to form um, to form cations, and non-metals are trying to, and the term for this process here is to reduce or reduction. So, in this case, um, why are they always charge balanced? It has to do with whenever you make an anion. So I have one item and two items here. If we give one guy gives this guy an electron, this guy becomes negative, this guy becomes positive, and it's the same. So those should be equal. All right. Um, all right. Here's another example of this barium nitrate. Now I wrote this out correctly here. This is a positive two, this is a minus three, so there we go. Let's write out the reaction, the oxidation reaction. Okay, so the barium, all right, is gonna go to barium plus two. Now, this guy lost, it's the same atom. So plus two, and now therefore it has two electrons, okay? So, next one is nitrogen. Nitrogen is gonna go to nitrogen minus Three. All right, so it needs to gain three electrons. This is a snapshot before, this is a snapshot afterwards. So we'll gain three electrons. All right, well, this guy's losing two, but this guy is gaining three. That's not the same number of electrons. The electrons are these guys. How can you have three here and only two there? So this process has to happen a couple of times in a row before this one runs. So we want to find out the common multiple. Essentially, what we're going to do is multiply this one times three, and this one times two. That gives us three bariums, which is saying three bariums, and six electrons. Those six electrons come here, which allows this thing to run twice. So two nitrogens, six electrons, two nitrogens. So we have a, put this all together, we have barium metal plus nitrogen gas, okay? And of course I have three of these. I have two of these. 
will yield barium nitride. And that would just simply be a three there and a two there. And of course, that's this guy. Okay. Um, so how do we go about get this? How do we get this from this formula? There we go. I just did it. Okay. That's how that's how we do it. Um, now one thing you might know again, this is older information. Uh, I just have the N2 here to remind you there are seven elements that are diatomic and we should have this already but there they are if uh, you don't. Okay, So just a little bit of back information on how we make ion compounds. You could actually make your own ion compounds. Um, you could make table salt very easily by taking um, chlorine gas and sodium metal. You just put them into a little flask. You might need to add a little water to kind of give them a, a a start. There's a sodium metal, you drop it, you pump in some gas, it gives them some sparks. You could YouTube this, uh, it gives off quite a bit of energy. So you could YouTube that uh, and uh, see how that works. So, um, all right. How would you describe this substance? Now, again, this is an ionic substance. Okay. And this thing is what we call a bulk crystal. So, in the sense, it's like, okay, how would you describe this thing? You know, how would you give it a name? How would you give it a formula? So, this goes to the crux of what we've just been learning, is that when you give an ion compound a name, you never, okay, give quantities. Well, why? Well, it kind of goes back a little bit to what we knew when this thing first started. It's literally just a pile, okay? Bulk crystal, not so fancy word to describe a bulk crystal would just be a pile, okay? And it's just of cations and anions. They attract in certain ways and if you give them time, you get a nice crystal and structure like this. Of course, if you don't give it time and you cool it down too fast, it just forms right where it is, okay? So how would you give this thing a name? Well, there's no way possible to tell how many there of these things there are in there. So once again, if you relate the, one of the major properties of an ionic compound is this idea that it's a bulk crystal. I could snap it right in half and I still have the same substance. So we can never tell how many there are in there. So all we do is give the name of the cation and the name of the anion. All right. Now, they could have given the ratio between the two, but they just chose not to. Okay, just that might be. I I would prefer that, uh, but they don't. Okay, so if this is if we say something uh, is like um, I don't know, cult copper chloride. Okay, this is a plus two minus one. So. In this, the name, well, this is one example where there's more than one, so this would be copper two chloride. But if we do, let's say, um, calcium chloride, then the, the, the name calcium chloride, okay, isn't, is never going to indicate that there is two of these and there's one of those, okay? So, how to give a formula for this thing? They're just giving us the actual ratio. The formula is the actual ratio of atoms. They can't tell you the total number. That would be impossible. All right. So it just gives the ratio of atoms, the ratio of cations to anions. All right. There's a name for that. It's called the empirical formula, the simplest ratio of atoms. And I think that's coming up here next. But um, so uh, again, how do I write? Out names and formulas. There we go. Okay. Um, and more practice. Okay. Now we'll end our discussion on the first part of ionic compounds.